That's hard right there. <laughs> for you to be done rocked out with pimp, work with pimp. What song? Oh, my third generation. Man, true Steve, story. Steve you be heard it. Steve be true heard. story. That was true you. True story, little bitch. Yeah, that's Man. Me. Story, little bitch. Smoke some bitch. Drop seven in the pot. pot. Hit it with the soda knock. Who's that? I, did, I was so long ago, I didn't even have a tag. Heartbeats on track didn't even exist. <laughs> they called me OJ, matter of fact, back then. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. What was it that, how, how did you guys end up just even coming together? He just found you? Because you was doing music already. His older cousins. I used to I used to record his older cousins. I told you, this is my third generation. Okay. Yeah, so once, I'm, I've been doing it 22 years. Once I hit 30, that's three generations. Man. Yeah. So I'm into my third generation right now, and his older cousins used to record in my studio. And um, I had I had set him up a studio at his at his spot. Like I gave him the template, I told him everything to, to to go buy and stuff like that. So once JD Young started growing up, he would record by his cousin house because they had the best studio. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I set him up right. So one time JD Young was doing a mixtape with Scotty Kane, and they called me to engineer it because they wanted you know Scotty Kane was a little bit more advanced. They wanted a real engineer, and you know mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. his, his cousin that the rap that recorded him can't really record like me, but he can get the job done. Shout out to Boona, Boona, that's his name anyway. So when I recorded J D Younger for that tape, it was a rap. Like, he didn't want nobody else to record him from that point on. Cause I'm so fast, bro. Like I'm, I record super fast and and it's fast and efficient. And then like whatever you thinking of, I'm finna do that already. Cause I've recorded so many artists, like I know what you thinking already. Nine times out of ten, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, it's like if you get stuck, I write too, so I I can throw you a line. You ain't stuck no more. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Just what was the first song that went crazy stupid with for J D Young and you that you produced? That you knew like this is crazy. I didn't know it, but Mud Brother. Okay. Um, at the time, I think the track I did for BG or Pimp C had the most views. There you go. Just stop right there. <laughs> you What's said that? the magic Anytime words. Anytime you say Pimp C in here, bro, you can just shut it down right there. We he got to stop. stop and talk about Pimp C every time. <laughs> Nothing else really matters at that point for me. <laughs> you can say it's like you're going blah, 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 ah, blah, blah. That's so let's talk about Pimp. That's hard right there. <laughs> For you to be done rocked out with pimp, work with pimp. What song? Oh, I'm my third generation. Man, true Steve, story. Steve you be heard it. Steve you be be true story. story. That true was you. True story, little bitch. Yeah, that's Man. Me. Story, little bitch. Smoke some bitch. Drop seven in the pot. pot. Hit it with the soda knock. Who's that? I, did, I was so long ago, I didn't even have a tag. Heartbeats on track didn't even exist. <laughs> they called me OJ, matter of fact, back then. Oh, uh, yeah? yeah, yeah. So mm. so true story, you produced that. Yep. That's hard, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I, like I produced that whole how uh, was true story album actually. How was it working with, with Pimp? Um uh, I and ain't did you really, work with him face to face or? Yeah, I ain't never recorded Pimp C. I've been on stage with Pimp C while he um while he performed my song though. That was dope. That was oh, hard. Okay. Yeah. What city was that? Hattiesburg? He performed for the Q. He did, did he Q he knew you. Yeah, I was on stage with him. I was on, like I, they performed my song. He knew me for sure. The last thing Pimp C ever told me was, we was at um, a release party, and he put his arm around me and told me, "Whenever I start using live instruments, I'm out of here." Wow. He said, "When you start using them, like I love your beats." He said, "But when you start using them live instruments, he said you gone." Mm. And, and that was true. I mean. Could be. Was that Could what set be, you? Be, what, I mean, was that what set you apart once you started no, doing that? No, no, because he he know he got the technology right. It, it's a I technology mean, driven isn't it, thing. Isn't a piano a live instrument? It is. Yes. And I use a lot of piano. But you already were using the piano. Yeah, but, fact, right. Facts. I'm just facts. thinking about how technology is, bro. I'm more. I get it. I do have a couple of people that come in and like you know play the guitars and stuff for me like that, and I make the beat around them and stuff like that, but. You know, PMC was a big uh, Real. live yeah. instrument fan. Mm -hmm. you know? How that whole situation in, ended up coming about, though, I had a partner down there named Seventeen uh, that was signed to him okay. a long mm -hmm. time ago. Y'all okay. probably know Seventeen that mm -hmm. went viral all kind of time. But anyway, 
I produced that whole Pimp C Presents 17. I produced that whole album. Yeah. It, Pimp C only did two Pimp C Presents, Boosie and Webby and 17. Man, and that, that was live. Yeah. 17 actually was dope artists. I heard was, some of his stuff. Was dope artists. You know, um, just a, a, a litany of things that Pimp had his hand in. Pimp had his hand in, I was watching, mm -hmm. you know, to be honest so, with you. Yeah, so he came down there, he, he would come, uh, I think they did an album release party in Mississippi. Pimp C came down there. He came with the whole family and all, all that stuff. I didn't go to that, but I do remember everybody, you know, talking about right it. before the show. I went to the show that was right after the oh, okay. meet and greet. I always be late. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, but that's what Pimp C so told me. That was, Pimp, was, was, was Pimp like, I guess when, he, when, when you knew that he had linked with 17, was that big for the city or? Huge. It was huge. Everybody it was knew. It crazy how it even happened. <clears throat> we in the studio. I had just met 17. He had paid me for an album for some beats. He paid me for all the beats up front and then left for like a year and didn't mm. pick out no beats. He said, I'll mm. be back to pick out my beats. I ain't seen him no more for a, a year. A whole year. A oh, year. That's crazy. He came back a year later. All right, I'm ready to pick him out. So he picked out all the beats. He came to the studio. We in the studio session. And um, somebody asked him, man, who are, who, who you, you know, have you want to do a song with? And he was like, man, I, I always want to do something with Pimp C. Because he had just bought a Yo Gotti verse. I produced that. So he was you playing with some paper. Yeah, he was like quarter million up at the time. That's hard. You feel me? Uh, he had just bought a Pastor Troy verse, a Bohega verse. I produced all of them. He, like, he really helped me out. That was early on in my career. And then he said he wanted to work with Pimp C. And there was a guy named Mon at a, in our studio session. He had a camera. And Mon, he, he owned a clothing store in Gulfport. He was like, a Moss Point, I'm sorry. He said, uh, man, PMC was just at my clothing store last week because he had just performed on the coast. He was like, I got his number. 17 said, call him. He called him. 17 walked outside. He came back in. He told me in Iceberg, he said, I need two beats. He said, I'm going to go to Texas tomorrow. I'm going to go do two songs with him. And uh, we made True Story on spot. Uh, Iceberg put a couple signs in there, too. Uh, and then he took another beat that I had made, and Pimp C ended up getting on both of the beats. The other one was Keith Sweat. I don't know if you ever, ever heard that one. I hadn't heard it. Uh, but that's hard to, it, it, listen, man. But look, but, listen, let me go ahead, tell you. Go so, ahead, so 17 walked out the studio, he came back and said, I needed two beats. He flew back, he flew to Texas the next day, did a song with him. He charged 14000 for the verse. Wow. From what 17 tell me, I don't know. Uh, he said he ended up giving him most of the money back and just signing him to UGK. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, and, and doing the project with him. Mm -hmm. That's hard, wow. man. Story, little bitch. Small some bitch. Drop seven in the pot. Hit it with the soda knock. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me. Yeah, we on Boss Talk TV. Shout out to E. He the reason you see me.